it slices, it dices, it comes out of Prague and has an odd name. That's right, it's Prusa Slicer. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the world of Prusa Slicer, and I'm glad you're here. By the way, hit that like button, get subscribed while you're at it, because we're gonna have a whole series on slicers. And we're gonna start it off with my personal favorite, Prusa Slicer. It is an amazing piece of kit for being literally 100% free. And it's built from the ground up, right? It's a fork from Slick 3R. And that's S-L-I-C-3R, Slick 3R. It's got a robust slicing algorithm that can get a little sluggish at times. And it has evolved with the industry to become a trendsetter to do certain things that other people can't, like paint on supports. And there is one other slicer out there that can do it, and that's Simplify 3D. Get subscribed if you want to see a video all about Simplify 3D, because that, that's coming. That's coming. When you download it, this is similar to what you'll see, but you might start in the configuration wizard, because, well, hey, wizard. And the wizard is really easy. I am not going to click that, but if you are trying to start from the beginning, you can start from the beginning. You can do Prusa FFF, Prusa MSLA, or you can even go to other vendors where you could go with a Lulz bot, which could be a Taz Arrow. It could be, let's go back. Could be Creality, because Creality's made ones for most of their reasonable machines. And all of these are pre-done profiles. That's pretty amazing. Right, these are all either community driven or specifically manufacturer driven. Do these work? Probably. I don't have any Creality printers yet. We are gonna get some very soon so we can try them out and compare them to the wonderful Prusa Mark III S's behind me. And you can even go down to custom printers where you can define whatever you want. You can add any filaments in the friggin' world. And honestly, if you can't find yours, just call it generic and be done with it. It makes life a whole lot easier. Things like SLA materials. There's things for updates where it will automatically check and download those updates for you, including the built-in presets, which were just updated because Prusa released some of their carbon fiber polycarb. Let me know in the comments below. Do you want us to get some of that and mess around and test it? That sounds like fun, but I'm only going to do it if you guys want to watch. Because I've got carbon fiber polycarb but it is not from Prusa, we all know. Stuff from Prusa is just generally better. You can also associate 3MF and STL files. 3MF is a big consortium surrounding a ubiquitous and easy to manage file type called 3MF. And Prusa, along with quite a few other companies out there have joined this consortium to make it the new standard for 3D printing. And we agree, 3MF is awesome. You can embed so many things inside of 3MF that you can't do inside of STL. It's just a better system. And of course you have your view mode. You can start in simple, advanced, or expert for those of you that like to fly a little close to the sun. And we're going to show you the differences in them right now. I don't need any of that stuff. I already got my stuff set. So we're just going to move forward. Pretend like we said, go forward. We'll start over in simple because, let's be real, you don't need to see everything. You just need the friggin' thing to work. So under print settings, this is all that's going to show you. This is expert. That's simple. So very simple, right? Layer heights, perimeters, solid layers under infill. You get to choose the density, the pattern, and the top and bottom patterns, which monotonic, just use it. Although if you want to mess around, play with Hilbert curves. They're actually quite a bit of fun. Skirt and brim, real simple. Support material, it gives you no options. It's either do you want it or do you not want it. Sonny, we'll take care of the rest of it. Just tell us whether or not you want it and we'll do it, right? Under filament settings, we move into your basic filament, which lets you choose your temperatures, your diameter, which should generally be 175 in a Prusa. Density, just trust whatever they give you. Um, generally PETGs 1.25 to 1.27, PLAs are on 
cost, whatever you want it to be. If you're running a business, make that a little bit higher. That way you can add yourself some profit in there. And I love this. You can put your spool weight in there so you know how much filament that you need to have without keeping a whole freaking spreadsheet. Ask me how we used to do it. And maybe if you ask nice, I'll show you our spreadsheet. It's not important anymore because this is a thing. But it's pretty cool. Prusa Slicer knows the weight of Prusament, their own house brand, PETG. And of course, community has provided answers to other spools as well. Cooling, is it always on? Yes or no? Is it enabled auto? Yes or no? Simple. Filament overrides? <laughs> Got it. I forget how simple simple really is. Over to printer settings. Yeah, you got nothing and you're going to like it. Simple is great if all you're trying to do is just make a freaking model. And by the way, we're going to print the same model with the same settings or as close to the same settings as we can from every single slicer, assuming I can build profiles for the Prusa MK3S. And if you want to see the full length of me building those profiles, let me know because we can release that, but we probably won't unless you guys want to see it because it is going to be superfluous and full of me not talking. Unless that's your thing. If it is, I think you're at the wrong YouTube channel. But if you like when I talk and you like when I yell into this microphone right here, especially about companies doing dumb stuff, get subscribed. So let's go over to advanced. Advanced is going to give you a little bit more settings. And if you notice, it adds on even some settings on these toolbars. Okay. So it enables, let's see what it enables. It's going to enable paint on supports as well as seam painting. And it looks like on the top side, it adds in your instances. So you can basically copy paste and ability to change into parts. Yeah, cool stuff. Um, let's throw a Benchy in here. Benchy! Now we have our Benchy and we can see that the Benchy is actually damaged. And so if you right click on that little exclamation triangle thing, hazard warning, maybe? I don't know, the thing that says, Stuff ain't right. It's gonna go ahead and actually repair it in NetFab, which is so friggin' cool! And if you know anything about the Benchy, the Benchy is benchmark print. Every single thing on this dumb little boat is measurable. And that's what we love about the Benchy. Now we just wait for NetFab to repair the model successfully. Clearly, singing is not what I should be doing with my life, but uh, I'm gonna do it. Oh well. <laughs> this is the Benchy boat. Every single thing on this boat is measurable. And uh, it was made by CT3D.XYZ, a company that ostensibly has one of the most popular 3D printing models that did literally nothing with it. Shame. Anyways, this is the Benchy boat. It tests basically everything that you can think of on your 3D printer, everything from cooling to diameters, overhangs because this thing is printed with no support uh you've got overhangs on thin layers and if you're a masochist you can really try to have that come out but unless you're really running tiny teeny tiny layers or resin that's eh, probably not gonna come out i've never had it come out where it's readable but i also care more about speed it even has things like this part down here is lower than this so it helps you understand if you can bridge across your perimeters and your infill as well it is a great print. It is played out. There are much better prints out there, including the Torture Toaster, which we love. But for beginners, oh my gosh, you gotta print a Benji. It's just part of being a printer. I, I, I don't know the better way to explain it. It's just, you gotta do it. You just gotta do it. But when we go to slice something in advance, we can look at and see that we have other options now. Right, we're able to choose things like minimum shell thickness, we can do spiral vase, and other options that we just didn't have before. And this makes Prusa Slicer valuable because as you grow, the software can grow with you. Where you're like, all right, simple's just too damn simple for me. Let me go over to advanced. And they've put time into understanding that, okay, someone that's advanced likes all of this, but if you're an expert, maybe you need some extra stuff. Most people don't. 
So advanced is perfect for you if you're, you know, all right, these are for the training wheels. It's time for me to walk, but I'm not ready to run a 10K, you know, right? Right? Me and my belly understand, I'll tell you that much. Anyways, support material, again, lots of options. Expert brings even more to the table that really give you, again, more flexibility. And the cool thing is, is that as you go through, let's say you have it on Expert, the colors here tell you what things show up where. So if you want to, if you want to experiment, go into Expert and play around. The worst thing that happens is you crash your printer. But Prusas can actually detect those crashes and sometimes recover from them. Just saying, play around. You've got nothing to lose other than some time and filming. But if you are running experimental stuff, don't leave a printer unattended. Okay, make sure you know what you're doing and know that you can trust your machine before you do all that stuff. Same thing under filament settings, lots of extra stuff comes and really from, you know, your simple to advance, all you add is your extrusion multiplier. Generally speaking, that's gonna stay on the one. Uh, expert is where you add all these other fan settings, which to me, I don't know if that's an expert only. I think this really should be an intermediate, but I understand why Prusa did it. It's just to protect the maybe not so advanced users. Well, okay, not the expert users, Prusa, from really hurting their prints by having too much fan or too little, right? Just trust that Prusa knows and it's baked into all of these options, okay? Cat break, and even under print settings, we see that many more things are opened up under advanced. Look at that, I mean, there was nothing here previously. Literally nothing. Advanced opened up a bunch more. Like, machine limits weren't even there, okay? And then when we add expert, nothing else comes up here, but we add custom G code, and we add more things under all of our extruders. Also, Victoria decided she had important cat things to do, so Greenfield, you're filling in. Good job. So we look at the actual slicing, and there are tons of options inside of Prusa Slicer, and I want to cover specifically infill patterns. So to show them, we're going to make a bigger Benchy. So let's go to 300, just so we can show you guys what I'm talking about here. We're going to stick with 10%, just because it's going to make it easier for everybody to see. But we've got things like grid. As we do the slicing, you'll see down here that it tells you what it's doing. Once the part is done, we can now go through and actually look at the infill pattern. So grid just does 45 degree offset grid patterns. Not a bad infill. It's good if you want lots of speed, but it's not my favorite. Cubic. Cubic is a little bit different than grid, where instead of just two lines, it's quite a few more, and they end up crisscrossing and intersecting with each other to create internal air pockets. Cubic is the fastest, strongest for the speed. Gyroid is technically the most proper strength. It's identical strength in X, Y, and Z. It's also the most fun. If you've seen one of our time lapses, you'll see one on screen right here, that's normally made with gyroid infill, but ones like the snakes video, you can see that is cubic. And there is another type of cubic called adaptive cubic. Adaptive cubic, as it goes through, I wonder if it's going to tell us, sometimes it does. Nope, as it goes through, adaptive cubic will look and see, do I have a lot of free air above me? If it does, it might lower your level of infill for a little bit. It's great if you're doing a big part and you don't want to have a bunch of infill taking it up, but you don't want to have the hassle of changing the infill every few layers. It will do it for you. So let's take a look at adaptive cubic. Adaptive cubic may not look all that different on this model, but... Yeah, I promise you it does work and it's pretty amazing. If you slice a bigger model with lots of open space, you'll see. And quite frankly, that may not be a bad idea. So let's go ahead and bring in a big model. 
We're going to add a box. We're going to make it ostensibly massive. Let's go 300%. No, four, five hundred percent. Now, will the Benchy also fit? Probably not. No. All right, we're going to hide the Benchy for this one. And we'll show you what Adaptive Cubic looks like. So there you go. There's Adaptive Cubic doing its job. We've got areas right here of less infill because, well, it looks ahead and says, okay, we don't need all of this plastic. So it's a great method. If we look, this is going to use 259 grams, 260-ish. Now, if we go back to regular cubic, we're at 259.91. Now we're at 347. That's a big difference. And that's 14 hours for the regular cubic to... Only 12 freaking hours. That's a big change, right? That's a big deal if I was someone who was doing printing and this wasn't something where I needed lots of strength. Adaptive Cubic is the way to go. But it's not the most fun. To do that, let's get rid of our box. Let's get our benchy. Let's center our benchy so that goes away. Let's take a look at Gyroid. Gyroid is honestly my favorite. It looks awesome. It's not the fastest, quite frankly. It's incredibly slow compared to the others. But it's kind of worth it. Gyroid is pretty freaking cool. Now we'll do it down here where you'll be able to see it. Gyroid effectively creates cylindrical channels by slowly meshing. I gotta get way in for you guys to see this, but slowly meshing squiggly lines. Gyroid is equally strong in all axes, which is pretty darn cool. I dig it. There are, of course, lots of other styles in here. Play around with it on your own time. But Prusa Slicer, to me, is really the best slicer out there. We're going to show Hilbert Curve because Hilbert Curve is kind of cool, too. But Prusa Slicer really is the best one out there, in my opinion. Look at that. How cool. It basically provides you with zero strength whatsoever because, yeah, it is fun for flexible prints. Prusa Slicer, to me, melds the right combination of... Really, really easy for beginners and giving the experts and the power users the control that they want in their 3D programs. And that's kind of a big deal, right? We as power users want more control than the average user because we're going to spend hours tweaking our individual profiles. And speaking of, you can change any of this stuff that you want. And it will then tell you that it was modified. And let's say that we go to a different one. It will then tell you before you move, hey, you change these things. Do you really want to move? And do you want to discard them? Do you want to transfer the settings over into your new profile? Which is crazy useful if you accidentally make changes on a profile that you weren't intending to make changes on. You can straight up save it, and you could also tell it to remember your choice. I don't recommend that because every single time might be a little bit different. But I love this. This is the new implementation from Prusa Slicer. They only added this a couple of months ago. But man, I tell you, it helps. Even things like you can hit this back button and this back button, and it brings things back to stock. It's so freaking useful. But I'll tell you, Stock Prusa Slicer is pretty darn good. Yes, they're going to run their printers a little bit slower than you might want in favor of a higher quality part. But I'll be damned if they're not well-tuned right from the factory. I think that its user experience is very good. It even has support for the 3D connection system. I don't like it as much as I like the mouse and keyboard, right? It just works. Um, but yeah. You can even import your own bed. So this is the Mark 3S bed. 
We can pull up a mini bed, which this is not gonna fit on a mini, but whatever. Can pull up the mini bed. And I even didn't even get to the part where Prusa Slicer does resin. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about Prusa Slicer. Are you gonna use this? Let us know in the comments below. And if not, what is your favorite slicer? So we can make sure we didn't forget it. Cause I'd love to try them all out and give you my honest opinion. Yes, I'm a Prusa fanboy. If you did not know this already, it, 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 it yeah, you should know this. I like Prusa. No, they don't pay us, but they should. Um, I'm excited. Prusa Slicer is constantly being updated and I think it is the slicer of the future. We're gonna show you some other slicers as well that are being updated at varying levels of not as good as Prusa Slicer, but hey, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys down in the comments. Let's talk, let's hang out. Anyways, stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Say bye, Victoria. Bye, Victoria. Ow. Shame. Shame, shame, shame. Right? Shame, shame, shame. All right, I'm done with music funds. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see the overview of the slicer, click right below me to find it. And hey, while you're down there, get subscribed, leave us a like, and ring that notification bell because it helps us grow. And yes, Patreon is coming where your name could be over here scrolling while I talk. Could be fun. I'll see you down in the comments. Have a good one.